welcome everyone to the Robert Center here in Wilmington, Ohio for the Fargo Rate Ohio Open. Where we are ready for a great matchup here between Petri Makonen from Finland and Konrad Justician from Poland. The loser is out and the winner advances to the last 16 in single elimination phase. Your commentators for this match will be Mark White and myself, Tim De Ruyter. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm doing great. I was lucky enough to be on the Fedor um, against Mika match. What a great game that was. And then I sat in the stands and watched the next one, the one that you commentated on. That was a great quick match as well. Catchy off the back of a long match with uh, Wojtek Shevchek. Held everything up, didn't they? Yeah, that took a while, but Kachi really made the schedule right after. He played really good that match. Yeah, pleasure to watch. Good break, but no shot, I don't think, on the one. Made yeah. a ball. Yeah, it's lost the cue ball a little bit, though. Like, after coming down from the hops, still had the backwards motion, but managed to have the cue ball still on the table. And, yeah, tough, really wide open layout. Just, yeah, has, doesn't have a look on the one. So just Thank push you. into a jump or a kick. Yeah, I mean, I'd, kicking wouldn't be too tough if he kicks the right side of the one, calling it in the side just in case, and then if you miss it, it goes up table behind the two and the ten. So we're playing two races, the four in this probability series format, and in case score gets tied one each we're having the famous shootout seen some great stuff already this week and I'm sure there will be plenty of shootouts to come yeah yes. this guy here on your screen now I watched one he had last night with Ernesto Dominguez and that went a long way I think it went to 8-7 you know oh wow Yeah, and besides that, we're playing with a 30-second shot clock. That means that there will be no slow play. It's nicer to watch and good to see a little bit more pressure on the players. Both players have one extension each per player, per rack, of course. So, both quite speedy players, so I don't really expect to see the beeps too often. Yeah, Petri 34 from Finland. Hot bit of pool at the moment, isn't it, Finland? Nickname Petu. I asked him what it means, and he said nothing. It's just a name. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just his name, but then in a different way. But I mean, this this man, former World Cup of Pool champion with Mika Eminen, he's won a Euro Tour, maybe two. I'm not too sure about that. He's a great player, and always really like to watch him too. He really usually like makes good choices, plays good strategy, plays good cue ball. Has a big swing, really can put some spin on the cue ball. Love a big spin, a big stroke. I love all that. Saw plenty of that this morning. Don't know whether he was watching the Fedor match. He played an unbelievable six ball and did things with the cue ball I've never seen anyone do before. <laughs> it was crazy. It's on the highlight reel if you want to go and see it. On the Predator Facebook page, it's on there. Go and have a look. Great shot. So Petri managed to cut the one in, but a little unlucky not to end up on the two and he's kicking here. Probably kicking the left side. Just trying to get the cue ball behind the nine and the two up table and he's made he's it. Did he call it? In. Did he call it? Wow. Oh, it was close. And well, even though it looks very easy, you know, oh, I'm guaranteed to make the two. It's tough to get on the three ball after. Especially there's a chance of running into the seven ball. Big draw shot. Yeah, he did that. Or Look oh, at wow. this. Look at that for a shot. Reminds me of Jimmy White in 1984. Just what it's a back. shot that was. The incredible stroke. Conrad Musician, the magician. Great shot. And he's finished absolutely straight on this. What are the chances? Oh, yeah, quite a, quite unlucky, to be honest. You might be able to just stun the cue ball a little bit out and take a longer four. Just make sure you have a nice angle. Well, 
he went to go even closer. Wow, look at that. Lots of right hand spin as well. Teased the cue ball up towards the four. Perfect shot again. Great start from the pole. You could say he's in pole position for this rack. Well, just queuing over the 10 ball is a little, a little tough. But this guy is such a straight shooter. When he gets on fire, like, he won't miss for a long time. Like, he's a good player. Just sometimes a little mental. It's where he's, like, very hard on himself and... He just came for a tough match, actually, against Alexa Patel. Yeah. Hard-fought battle. Yeah, also, last year's Open, he had a good result. He beat me. No. <laughs> He's finished, I think it was top 16, maybe. Yeah, I think top 16. Beat some good players along the way, and... Plays quite speedy, too. It's nice to watch. He's not too slow himself. Yeah, and his name is worth an absolute fortune on a Scrabble board. So this stem ball too. Oh, just awkward queuing up by the point. Win the first game. No problem. 1-0, Conrad Justician. Yeah, also a snooker player himself, Conrad. So quite some good snooker players on the tour from Poland nowadays. Mateusz Baranowski and Antek Kowalski, and he actually competes with those playing snooker. And he shows up with his pool cue too. I was just talking to Tony about it, that usually when the snooker player sees someone walk in with a pool cue, like, oh, this guy is a pool player. Oh. And then there's a couple good pool players out there that really can play some snooker, and this guy is one of them. There's our referee getting the balls ready. Ready are cost too. And there, Tim, is your favourite site. If you look at that, that eight ball now, look, look at them lights. There's seven of them. Yeah, great view. That makes up our arena here, the Predator light, the arena light. If you want to buy one for your home or whatever, go check out PredatorQs.com. So breaking from the side, quite square hit, but not too forceful. Yeah, a little okay. bit lacking in power, wasn't it, that one? Yeah, if on you just look, he didn't really put a lot of movement, like body movement into there, just a long stroke. Now I'm wondering, can he see the right side of the one? Is he fully hooked? He, oh, I don't know. I think he might have a... If he could, it would be nice because there's a buffer there, the two ball. You think he can because he's coming around to see what would happen if he catches it. I know he's going off the side routing. Pushing out even. He's pushing out. Yeah, probably to the same safety shot, but just didn't have a look. And tying up the balls, very interesting. I would say that like Conrad is a player, like if you give him a couple shots, he's going to get comfortable and well, will run out from everywhere. Now, safety-wise, more strategical, stra strategy kind of player, I, I would say Petri is more... Strategic. Yeah, more, yeah. So I think if they can get more into strategy, then Petri has a little, little edge. Yeah, we'll be looking to see the cue ball behind the two and the eight here. Called it in the side just in case, but such low percentage to make it. That quite soft though. Has he got there? No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm looking right down the line of this. He can, he's got a full one ball to aim at. Nice, easy safety. Oh, he's hit it a bit hard, though. He's hit both balls too hard. Yeah, I'm not sure what he can do with the two ball as well. Looks like the two doesn't go past the four. So he might have to 
draw directly into the two. I quite like that, Tim. If you go past it, you've still got some kind of shot at it. You or probably play just play the combo. Either the combo or the safety behind the eight. Would you play the combo here? I mean, it looks really good, to be honest. Like, he can float this in and always have the two ball after, and especially with that speed, it's a big chance even if you hit the four nut perfect, they will still slide in. Yeah, just like that. Nice. Nice now. control and a good angle on the two to do something to go to the three. Plenty of other action going on. People fighting now. This round that we're playing now, everyone will decide their fate in this particular round. They're either going on to the last 16 or they're going home. Oh, it's a tough shot now, though, using the bridge. If he gets somewhere near the nine, Tim, he might have a decent shot of the three. Yeah, he can also choose to stun left and go to the short side of the three. And then if he doesn't get there, play the safety. Oh, no, no scratch. And oh, he still has a safety here. Petri Mackinen. Sure, how many of these he's played, Tim? I don't recall seeing him in one of these actually. Yeah, he's he did actually quit for a couple of years. Oh, what a shot that Ooh, is! This he's is played. Sweet. What a way he held that cue ball. Lots and lots of low left on that cue ball. Watch this, killed it off that rail. Look at that. A lot of draw on there. Hit that really nice. And like I was just gonna say, he used to play all the events everywhere and then he. Kind of disappeared from the tour. Nobody seen him. Nobody actually knew for like a couple of years, and now he's finally back to playing all the events, and which I think he should. I think he's current Finnish champion as well. Pretty sure he is. He's won it on six occasions. Yeah, I think the first time I seen him in a long time oh, was in Bremen. Oh, oh, oh! Well, it might be perfect. <laughs> But it's definitely not what he was trying to. I think he was trying to get the seven to the bottom left. So that's why he looked kind of sad. And now he looks happy. <laughs> Seeing all the emotions. <coughs> Looking pretty good to level this up. Yeah, just stun over. The nine in the bottom left corner. Q's nice, doesn't he, Tim? Yeah, that's why I was talking to Darren about it. He's definitely one of those players. Like, he's really underachieved. Like, he's got great technique. Plays a lot of good shots. Like, like choosing the right shots here and there. Good with strategy. Has a great break. Like, he actually should win more than he does. Perhaps he's on the comeback trail. I mean, he's 34 or so. He can still do it maybe this week. He's leveling the score one each. So. So let's go round the room very, very quickly. Other matches going on. Fedor Gorst in action against Daniel Maciel. Gorst has taken the first rack there. Kang Lee is one up on Chang Jung Lin. Riku Rompanen has just started out against Pierce Labutis. And David Alcady is up against Sullivan Clark. Sullivan Clark playing some great stuff this week. The guy that's come all the way from New Zealand. And also uh, Chia Chen is one up on Justin Martin of the United States. Here we go then. Right, number three, Petri Mackinnon. Have a look over this break and tell us if you're going to be satisfied with this one, Tim. I know you're a hard man to please. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's so sad now he doesn't make a break, like make a ball on the break, but 
You know, I really just like, like he doesn't really hold back. Like he really gives everything on the break and it's control. He didn't hit him perfect square in the face, but this, I mean, the cue ball is going perfect in the kitchen. I needed six eyes there to keep my eyes on all the pockets. Crazy break. So has left a shot on the one here. And can he go twice across and maybe just nudge into that two ball? There you go, perfectly played. Yeah, took, took the gamble and definitely got the reward. Yeah, just getting on the four and then back up for the five could be a little thing. If he gets quite straight on the four, everything is okay. If he leaves angle, running towards the 10, he could be in trouble. So let's see where he puts himself on the four. Decided to go to the other side of the four, which was a good choice. Easier to get to the five, I guess. Nicely on the five. Look at the six waiting, oh. begging over the side pocket. Yeah, probably just going to draw back a little bit. I'd rather be too short and still have a shot on the six than overdraw and get behind the seven. Yeah, he can, st he can choose to stun off the rail too. I might like that better. To play in the corner, you mean? Yeah, if he gets anywhere close to being straight, then... Oh, this is in between. It's not great to be shoot in the side. It's not great to shoot in the corner either. Can he still roll the six ball to the corner and not scratch? It looks, the scratch is close. He's cutting to the side, maybe low. A lot of inside, oh, and he's, he's completely misjudged that. It's absolutely, well, pushed the ball away from the one ball, from the, sorry, from the six ball. Well, and that's a quite big mistake. Well, what a gift. Interested to see that he was still trying to hold the cue ball for the seven in the side. Could have went for the seven in the bottom right corner too. With the angle he had. So now probably going to use just one rail in between the ten and the eight and come back up. There's Fedor in the background. Sent to the one lost side this morning in our first match by Mika Imanen. Winding back the years, Mika in that match. I mean, his cue ball was absolutely pinpoint. Played terrific stuff. Fedor not doing too much wrong in that match. Just a couple of balls, that was about it. Meanwhile, Petri. Takes a 2-1 lead. And it's looking good. We'll go for a short break. Welcome back to Robert Centre here in Wilmington, Ohio. Petri Mackinnon has taken an early lead in this first set. Don't forget we're playing two races to four. I'm Mark White. 
with me in the booth is Tim the Ruiter. I wanted you to say it because you can say it right. <laughs> well, I go by a lot of names. Wow, that is a break now. Even I can appreciate that. He, wow. He like I said, if, so you, if you break like this, you're going to win matches just by breaking like this. Look at that, Tim. Look at that cue ball. Look, absolutely centre. Yeah, I could have done with a little bit more straight on the one, like getting a little bit better shape on the one but it does have a shot and he can play top left and go to the other side of the three I think that's the hardest break I've seen on this table I mean I haven't seen every yeah, match that, of course. that's exactly what I'm saying like he as good as he breaks and plays next to it he definitely should win more I mean I played him three or four times and we usually really have like close battles so you're always like hill hill or nine seven it's always close really enjoy our matches this is good this is good uh, good stuff from petri and now work up to that six can you shoot a six ten combination in the probate series early ten balls are a win so that means as long as you hit the lowest number of ball on the table, call the 10 ball in any of the six pockets, you'll win the game. And I think the 6-10 combination is there. Might be able to play from the five up to the short side of the six. And then if he comes out too short to shoot the 6-10 combo. I mean, if he can get decent shape on it. He can play for it, Tim. And if he goes too far, he can always just play it up to the right-hand corner, couldn't he? It doesn't go past the seven, but it does go past the ten into the other pocket. Ooh, oh, don't go straight. Don't go straight, Petri. Oh, he's got a slight angle. Not much. Yeah, he might have to go real first, I think. Look at this. Well, perfectly straight. He was never going to scratch, but he got a little nervous, started tapping the table, and yeah, probably yeah, real first. first yeah. oh, he's, oh, he's, missed it. he's got perfect on the six ten, but wake up, Ernesto. He's been working hard, Ernesto has. Him and his team. Recovered all of these tables on Tuesday. Got them all ready for the guys on Wednesday. Yeah, amazing team we have here for the Pro Beard Series. They only had like 30 hours to set the whole room up, and they did it everything just in time before the players' meeting. Called the bank. Going all out here. It's a great oh, shot. It's wow. a great shot. And look and at the position. Perfect. He's perfect. Wow. What a great bank so shot that was. Called the 10, of course. Look at this. Well worth a replay. In it goes. And look at the way he judged the pace of the cue ball. Oh, and Petri will be disappointed because it could have been on the hill and now it's two each. Big Levels difference. To score. Big, big difference. Around the room then, let's go quickly. Justin Martin has taken a 2-1 lead in his match against Chia Chen. Sullivan Clark just started against David al 1-1 now, Kang Lee and Chang Jung Lin. For the course now, 1-1 with Daniel Maciel. Now, Chang Jung Lin, I didn't realise until last night, when play finished, Chang stayed behind and was doing lots and lots of 10 ball breaks and there was photographers around and I was sort of, what's going on here? And then I thought, right, okay, Puerto Rico. So they're doing some little promotional video for Puerto Rico for the World 8 Ball. Then I realised, oh, somebody told me that he's the reigning champion. It hasn't been played for 10 years, but he is the reigning World 8 Ball champion. I didn't think about that. Just a useless piece of information, of course, if it comes out of my mouth. 
Conrad to break with level at 2-2 two, two in our first race to four, guys. Here we go. Put a little bit more into that break. Had a square hit, but again, no ball. It's that same thing, isn't it, Tim? The corner ball comes around and knocks the one ball out of the way. Tony was pointing that out to me. Watch this on the yep. replay. Watch the seven. Nudged into the two and the two. Which, which is the reason why Conrad has to start changing where he's putting the cue ball. Like, he has to start moving the, the cue ball around a little bit on the break. I often think, well, you know, they practice the break lots. They know what adjustments to make. But when it comes into a match situation, it almost seems like they're not scared, but a little bit dubious about changing the position of the cue ball. Yeah, it's because in practice, like maybe their table, that spot where they put the cue ball might work perfectly. So they're just doing exactly what they trust. And they're not used to just switching yeah, the spot where they're breaking from. This is exactly their comfort zone. Oh, and he's found the gap there. Left a good chance for Petri. Yeah, here we have the replay. The one leaked out in here and left Petri perfect angle to go to the two. Oh yeah, this is nice, isn't it? It's a little draw. Beautiful stroke. My favorite sound in the world. <coughs> Lots of teams arriving today, 140 of them all playing the BCA Ohio State Championships. It's Teams Day. And already it's filling up. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy in here later. Has he got enough pace on this or oh. not enough or what? F 50 yard line, I think he was trying to shoot the three in the bottom left corner. And he's gotten in between both of them. Might still be able to shoot it in the either left or right corner. Could go in the left and use the long rail to go for the short side of the four. Or shoot it in the bottom right and run into the eight. He yeah, goes in both those corner pockets so he can go in either way he wants here. Look at this oh, for a shot. Nice Look bomb. at that for a shot. Yeah, that's a great cue ball control here. Now I might just stun over to the other long rail and take a longer five. Just try to put myself straight, long and straight. like this because the six is hanging over the hole so if he just makes the five from here it's back to routine looking good for Mackinnon to be the first on the hill on that one just a little bit Tim this is awkward now the 10 balls in the way I wouldn't surprise me if he has to get the bridge out here you know yeah he's not the tallest of the players and the 10 ball if he touches it with his shirt look at maybe his where the referee needs to watch this and he's right behind it whoa he's so close to it on the other side that seven ball was quite easy but was not planning in running into the eight. He apologized there. If he'd have had his lunch, he might have touched that ball with his shirt there. Just avoided it though. Yeah, and little nudge on the eight. Go up and down. Still trying to find this, the, the perfect speed on the table. You can really see it. Sometimes it comes up a little short. Sometimes he overruns the cue ball. He's been making quite some good shots, trying to still hang in there. 
this is the goal on the hill. Puff of the cheeks, feeling the pressure, but he'll be feeling very relieved as well. In it goes, well played. Petri Makona up 3 to 2. We'll be back with the remainder of this set. Back everyone, Petri Makkonen ready to break 3-2, he's on the hill in this first set. Before we continue, I would like to thank our sponsors and partners of course, because without them, all of this would not be possible. I'd like to thank Fargo Rate, Predator Qs and Q Sports International and the US Pro Beard Series partners are Seabirds Beard Supplies, Kamui, Alpha Coin Cryptocurrency, Jam Up Apparel and Medaya Light. Thank you all for supporting us and make sure you check out our sponsors and partners. And look at this for a break again. I mean, he's crushing them. Just can't make a ball. Well, he's hitting them so hard, I thought he'd be splitting them in half and we'd end up with 20 balls on the table. Yeah, I've seen the cue ball, like little pieces flying off. So, easy start up for the Pope. Yeah, left him a little, left himself longer on the two ball. Just wanted to make sure he had enough angle. If he makes a two with top spin, we'll automatically go in between the four and the ten for the three. Oh, Just like nice that. Stroke. Perfect. Just a little stun out for the four into the same pocket. Oh, a little bit strong for the left hander. That's why he's shaking his head. He's gone a little bit too fast. It's just little things like that make all the difference, don't they? Now he's going to have to get the extension on his cue. And cannot afford to make another mistake because Petri, even though he doesn't have the speed of the table down yet, he's... Well, he's got an extension and he's called it his extension. He's out of extensions. Yeah, so. Another one, look, I, I said he's out of extensions. He's not, he's put another one on. <laughs> 20 seconds left. And oh, played a good shot, nice and straight on the five to the top right. And if he plays a stop shot here, six in the top left, seven is nearby. Just, I think he does have a full pocket on the five. Did look a little tight on this corner. Oh, he's missed it, is he? Ooh. Oh, he really, really cheated that pocket there by quite a lot. Oh, played it off four rails. Oh, it looks like he saved one set point. Great match so far from both players. I mean, Good. not, not both many breaking mistakes. Well. Yeah. And this deserves to go hill hill in this first set. Just stun with a little right. Over to the other side and just stumble to make it hill hill. In it goes, and his teammate is in the audience. Wojtek Shevchek giving him a round of applause at the end of that game. 
Wojtek, of course, got beat by Eklund Kachi, and Eklund Kachi then came over straight over to this table after a very long match, which ended in a shootout, actually, between Wojtek and Eklund. And Kachi went on to, well, he beat Michael Schneider very quickly, didn't he, in straight sets, 4-1, four, 4-0, four, I think, was it? Yeah, like yeah but it's, I mean, Michael was a little unlucky overall seen in the match but Kachi just played really well there was not much he was Michael was almost kicking every time he got to the table or just sat in his chair Hill Hill Conrad Shushishin okay put almost. a little bit more on that made the one uh, not enough on the two to work with I mean, he's got to look at it, but what can you do with that? Can you slither off the end of it and try and play a hook, Tim? Or is that a little bit too adventurous? Well, what I was looking for, you might see just enough to shoot the two off the three in the corner. Yeah, I think so. The two off the three, if he wants to go aggressive, which he's quite a quite offensive player, so he might like to do it. Not sure what else he could do. It's either that or I would play a push out. I think he's delivering off it, off the edge of it. Trying to go in behind the throw. Near the 10 somewhere, I don't know. Yeah, he's pointing the cue ball there. I think he's called it. He's called it in the corner. Oh, he's hit the six first. Oh, and how is this two? Oh, I was gonna say, is he gonna give a two ten combination, but Oh, ball in hand should be enough. I think he was trying to shoot the two of the three, but completely misjudged that. But he called the top corner. I couldn't work out why he was calling that, or whether he was just pointing to... I think he, he was trying to leave the cue ball up there in case he wouldn't make the ah, two in his bottom okay. corner, but I mean, it was, th was a tough shot. If I would have understood, I really would understand if he was going to play a push out on that, because there was not many options. Very difficult layout here, especially if he leaves himself a nice angle on the five. Close, like if he can get close to the five and a nice angle. Oh, he hasn't played this right. Okay, he's still got a shot on it. It's a thin one down the rail. Yeah, I mean, in this case, there's a lot of room in the center of the table. So if he can just zigzag, like hit long rail, long rail, and get back anywhere to the center of the table, it's good. He's got plenty of options next on the six. So stay down and... Ooh. Caught that a little thick. Something about that five ball. Conrad well, did that in the last rack. Well, he looked to... Like if you look at the cue ball, he was really trying to hold the cue ball. That's why he cheated the pocket, like subconsciously. Which I was going to say, just go zigzag. And if you leave more angle, just go two rails with a seven. He's really trying to play it a nice way. So he needs one more shot like that. Blowing himself up like, a, like he's blowing up a balloon there. Now then, one more good stroke. Playing yeah. for $25,000 here, first prize, 15 for runner-up. So it's pretty good prize fund here, Tim, for 64 players. Well, and this is interesting. I was going to say, is he going to leave himself the nine in the corner or in the side? And he was trying to get on the side, and I think I would have played just for the corner because I, if you make the eight, you're always going to have a shot on the nine. 
No, this is a tough guy. I think he can drag it in though, can't he? Just low. Well, he's nice cutting stroke, it in the side, it? but yeah. I'm not sure if he can avoid it then. He's hit it real thin with some spin. Wow. Oh, wow. he's hit it real thin. But well, we've seen it. Didn't Conrad wow. musician do that on the six ball in, in one of the earlier racks? He's completely misjudged that. And there is his friend there, sat next to him. Can't believe what he's just done. Well, Conrad just dodged a big bullet there. And he wins the first set, four to three, and he cannot believe he just won that first set. That was so wow. huge. What a gift. We'll go for a short two minute break, and then we'll continue with set number two. And here we are back to the US Pro Beard Series Arena. Petri Mako is shaking his head here. He cannot believe he's missed that nine ball in that last set. Completely gave away the whole set. Should have been done at 3-2. Uh, and he played really, really well. Played so well. And then to make that, well, it was a schoolboy error, wasn't it, in the end? Yeah, here we have a replay about what happened. I'm so surprised he tried to play it for the side. Like he, he was always going to be guaranteed to the corner if he played, if he took a little speed off that. I think, I think what went through his mind here was he's sort of in between. Yeah. You know, he was in between. He hadn't really decided, Tim, what he was going to actually do and ended up doing nothing. Yeah, and then this cut, I mean, I told I, I was going to say you have to hit it really thin or you might run into the 10. But I didn't mean him to hit it that thin. I mean, I mean that is strange. I mean, you know, OK, it was thin, but it wasn't like ultra thin. It was like maybe quarter, just over quarter, something like quarter ball or something. Yeah, I completely miss hit that. Here we have Conrad just entered the arena again after a little bathroom break and we'll be breaking in set number two from the side again. Let's see how much he puts into this one. Well, I'm wondering, did he move the cue ball maybe a little bit back or maybe a little bit to the side? It looks like he's just doing the same thing where it would be really tough to make a one. Watch for the one getting kicked on its way to the side. Didn't that time. But came up too high. Oh, wow, look made at this. Two other balls look at oh. this. Look at the one and the two and the three and the four and the, and the seven and the nine and the ten. <laughs> All of them in the open. Well, that one ball looked like it was not going to be so nice. And then the eight said, well, here you go. Just I'll make sure you can't miss the one. 
And the, especially rolls like this, it's extremely dangerous against Conrad because he'll feel so comfortable and before you know it, you're down even more. Nice Ooh, three rail needs firm. it to oh needs a full in the face kick here. He's got it. Lucky boy. He's a left hander as well, which will be a help here. Just to draw back. That lovely overhead shot there. Don't go by the seven though. He's okay. Well, nice. he's over nice. it slightly. Could be a very quick rack. Yeah, top left on this seven ball. Back to the center of the table. Yeah, I like to see Conrad doing well. He's at all of these events. I don't think he's missed one of them, to be honest. Came a little straight on the eight, so decided to go two rails forward. Don't go straight on this one, though. Smiling. Well, he's dead straight on it. So yeah, which is okay. He can draw back a little bit, maybe leave himself close to the side pocket to give him some more queuing space. But he just he took it like this. Took his medicine straight. Conrad just is in. Draws first blood here in the second set. Some scores, Tim, just to bring you all up to date watching. Fedor Gorst has taken the first set against Daniel Messiel. Also, one set up, Justin Martin from the US. Is a set up against C. Chia Chen. Kang Lee, 3 2 up in the first set against Chang Jung Lin. And your friend Pierce Labutis, 2 1 ahead in the first set against young 14 year old Riku Rompanen. Back to the table to break off, leading one set to nil and one rack to nil. It's Conrad Jizician. Breaking from the same spot. Yeah, One ball came high again. And oh, look at that lovely little kick there from the cue ball. The six going in the side. See the six ball traveling towards the side and then went in over the cue ball. And we might see Petri back with the cue ball behind either the four or the seven. to go and it has oh, gone absolutely perfect well as Tony would say he's in jail no bail don't throw away the key just yet because he might have a two railer here yeah it's probably going to jack up the queue Smaller, not jacking up as much as I thought. Oh, he's trying to go through. Wow, as well. what was a great not effort that off. was! <laughs> Terrific effort. That's worth another look. Did he, he play that with right hand in English? Didn't he? Yeah, Tim, to just to it check short, it. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, that first set completely changed the whole momentum, and now Conrad probably starts to play well. Like, had a good break and run last game, and played a good safety now, ball in hand. That's the opportunity to go 2-0 up. Oh, he's not happy with this, left himself a much longer shot on the three ball than he was trying to. Yeah, Petri should have been the man at the table now. If he'd have made that, that nine ball. Oh, 
Oh, he's really grabbed hold of that cue ball. Beautiful shot. He's really starting to buzz now. Yeah, might need a little work to go from the eight to the nine. Needs to stay on the left side of the eight. Oh, Ooh, hit slow that up, firm slow again. up, slow up. Uh oh. Or go past it, one of the two. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, not easy either to get safe off this. You know what even surprises me more? He's had the full length of the table twice to end up. He is really not feeling great, or at least the table speed. And yeah, he's also not happy with this too. He caught it a little thick, didn't he? The the seven bolt. Petri is cutting this. Big shot. If he makes this, he's probably out going up and down the table. But if he doesn't make the seven, there's a big chance of the seven staying in front of that top right corner and a sellout. Head still. Cue through the ball. Eyes on the prize. He's overdone oh. it, has he? Oh, what a great shot. Oh, he actually oh, hit no, that good no, and ran no, into no, the eight. No, no. Oh. Well, I'm not sure what he's what he's got left. I mean He's got a shot at it. This is another tough tough shot. You see nice smooth execution there. Oh, and he's missed the eight. Oh, and secure work on a scratch. Well, he might be safe here, though. Well, he'll take that full length of the table. Nine feet between the balls. As his finished teammates there. Yuski, Yani Yuski was one of them. Yeah, they have a... Nice group of players in Finland. He's gone the four railer, has he? Oh, I'm wow, sure he has look at this. Then. Yeah, Petri, he's left Petri either a cut on the eight. I like banking this onto the ten, don't you? Yeah, or that. Yeah, I think he's called it. It's called the ten ball. Yeah, don't worry about the ten, just make the bank. Well, and also, this would be quite painful for Conrad as he had a good break, good safety. No, it's not there, is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, wow. How yeah, did I just and thought, he you know, and he's scratched and he's left a, an 8-10 combo. Oh, back and forth here. Yeah, it always looked, Tim, that it wasn't going to make it. And the easiest of shots for Conrad to double his lead in the second set. He now leads 2-0 and one set to zero. So, go around the room once again quickly for you. See what's going on. Sullivan Clark, 2-1 up against David Alcady. Kang Lee has taken the first set against Chang Jung Ling. What a great start that is for Kang Lee great player playing really well just of late Feder Gorse one up took the first set and Daniel Maciel also from Poland is uh, he's taken the first rack in the second set so let's just have a look at Sullivan Clark there look in the background he's come all the way from New Zealand and he actually said to me at Vegas just stroking his hair out the way that's the guy we're looking at told me in Vegas that he's going to go away for a year practice snooker, get some coaching and come back and win something big. Would be a cool story. Hit them well as he made a ball. Nope. Didn't really hit them hard though, did he? It took a little bit of pace yeah, off him, Tim. He, he does break. Like He uses a long stroke, but he doesn't really put a lot of body in it. Like If you just look at it, the only thing he does is he comes up, puts the whole cue into it, and that's it. What should he be doing? 
jump, kick the leg in the air. No, just <laughs> no, just like if you look at Petri, he really uses like timing in his body too to put more energy into the cue ball and Oh no. He's just getting a little bit lazy, a little bit careless at the moment, Petri. Don't think he's fully recovered, you know, from that nine ball he's missed in the first to win the first set. Yeah, and then also he had a good opportunity to level the score just last game. Another, Another huge draw, draw shot. Oh, has he scraped? No, That's he hasn't. Bad news. But he's gone behind the three. And he might have locked himself up pretty bad here. Can he one rail it, Tim? Go to the rail closest to him. I don't think so. Let's have a look where it's ended up. No, two rails. Call it in the side. He might have to elevate using the long rail and jump over the three. Oh, he's jumping directly. Wow, this is a tough jump. This is a really tough jump. You wouldn't think this is, is possible. He's jumping to the short rail and trying to cut this in he's jumping over the eight. Oh, on the way back oh, oh <laughs> look at this dead weight on the rails oh, gets wow. it safe good shot <laughs> he tapped the table he knows he's lucky but wow <laughs> could you even imagine trying to do that how tough it is well petri must be thinking Everything's going against me at the moment. Oh, this doesn't look like a very good shot either. A little bit careless once again. And look at this, Tim. You've got to call the 10 here, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to call it. It's a free shot. If you don't make it, the 10 ball's going to go around the table, so... He's judged the pace perfectly. Judged the pace perfectly. Yeah, that was risky. He was always going to run up to there, and also there was a little spin on there, so that means the cue ball is always going to try and find a little path on the cloth. So it was quite risky. If it touched the, the inside of the corner, it was probably going to go in. Tell you what else was quite risky there. It, as he came to the table, he dropped it, he just threw his chalk in disgust on the on the table. And lucky that it was a, a cube chalk. Because if it was a circular one, it might have rolled down onto the onto the cue ball. And we've seen that before. Max Lechner did it in the Masters. Well, it was a good try actually. He hit the good side of the two, but it has leaked out, and now if Conrad can cut this in and run it to the four, the whole game is open. Yeah, he's changing his mind, playing a safety. Called it just in the corner, just in case, get over behind that three, four. It's a decent shot. And Petri just losing his way at the moment. Nine ball. Oh, good hit. It's a good shot. Knew he was going to push the nine to the long rail, so was trying to just stay close to it. It's a strong shot. Is Conrad out? has the jump cue out. Wow, oh, he's made it. No shot on the three. Might be able to go real first on this three if he wants to go offensive. Here we see again. See, just landed a little bit too close to the two. That's why the cue ball still kept jumping after touching the two. But it worked out okay. I mean, no shape, but. Oh, look at this. You called it. He's making it work. You called it. Now he's got a bank on the four, I think, has he? And yeah, I think he's. That's the thing. When he gets that feeling going, he just keeps making balls from everywhere. It just doesn't matter where you put him. 
Yeah, he's sort of almost on autopilot, isn't he? Where he can just just keep making balls. A bit like Miesko oh. Fortunski as well. But as they say, you can never make them all. Now then, Petri Makinen, you need to step up here. You need to start making some balls. Good. Yeah, might be able to shoot the seven, eight in the side, and the nine also in the, in the top side pocket. Can't see any possible hiccups. Yeah, got a little straight on the six, so probably plays top right to the other side. Stun the angle a little bit. He's overhit it. He's overhit this. And it doesn't pass the eight ball. Yeah, and I'm he's not got sure to if play he's the hook. The he's cut. got to play the hook, hasn't he? Behind the oh, eight. That's what I was thinking. But he can still cut and bring the kill around four rails. You think he can cut this in the side? Yeah, use a lot of right and hit it thin. Go short reel, long reel, short reel, long reel, back to the center of the table. But also just cut and run into the nine. Oh, and he's got the same shot. To yeah, and he completely jumped up off that. I want to see the replay of that. Just watch him. He just threw everything at it. Watch this. Came up. He was coming up as he went through on his stroke. And if, you know, you think you translate that, Tim, into just a little bit of body movement onto the cue ball, you know, and you're going to swerve away from it. Well, this What's might happened there? Be a little bit too much too. He was trying to get it to the short rail, and did he leave the cut on the seven? I think he might have done. Yes, he oh, yeah. certainly has. Probably looking to go around the nine. Both players rocking at the moment. Now then, what sign, kind of shape is he going to have? Does that eight go? Does it go? Might be able to cheat the pocket a little bit. He also choose oh, to don't. shoot the combination. Oh, he doesn't? Well, oh, I'm not sure. I don't think it goes, t Tim. Well, from this view, I think it goes. Yeah, he's got half a pocket. There you oh, go, just nine. caught it. It was a tough shot. Yeah, got it too thick and... He's going through it at the moment, I isn't he? Conrad will be happy because this is a gift. Yeah, and he's had one in, he's had a gift almost uh, in at least three racks that I remember. Yeah, the first set, both players were quite good until Hill Hill. But this set, it's just been Conrad, just this and only. He's up 3-0 over Petri Makonen. Stay tuned, guys. Back we are. Referee wrecking the Arcos two balls. Pair Arcos two balls for Conrad Justician to break on the hill. Yeah, 
You sounded like Yoda then. Back we are. So this then to take the second set and with it the match. How's the break? Yeah, I caught it again. A little bit too high on the one. And it came up dry. Last call for Petri Makonen. Does he go for it? Yeah, I think so. I think he could. No right in between five and the eight and the eight and the nine. Little he short hit it pace. To get. Just got there. Oh yeah, if anything, Tim, that's one thing he has struggled with, isn't it? The pace. He's a hit short on a lot of a lot yeah, of shots. He's, he's hit a lot of good shots and just struggling getting the cue ball where he wants it to be. Oh, this is a sweet shot. That was tough. Played it nice, didn't he? Most players don't like to shoot it that way. Really soft, a uh, touch of spin. Did that nicely and we'll probably just tap this three ball in for the four in the top right corner. And a little follow, just to make sure he doesn't have to queue over the seven. Yeah, five and six into the same pocket. Nicely queued again, got all the way through that cue ball. Cannot relax for a second in this format. Oh, they came up a little short on the seven. You might have to play stun and go three wheels forward. But nine ball is in the way to play low right and come back down. I'd be leaving the eight in the side. Or the corner. Yeah. Seemed to pot that into the wrong half of the pocket and slowed the cue ball up quite a lot, Tim. Yeah, they'd also not really put much left spin on there, so didn't really accelerate from the rail. So a tough eight ball. A little tester. Oh. And there you go, it's another eight ball. The 10 ball's dropped in, the eight ball's dropped in, it's getting worse. Yeah, so it's just two balls for Conrad to finish his match, and uh, I feel sad for Petri. Been playing good lately, but especially the second set, he hasn't been feeling too great. Oh, I hit that good. Beautiful. Beautiful. This to go into the last 16 single elimination phase. When we come back, guys, at 5 p.m., we will be down to those last 16. Yeah, so Conrad just is in, wins the set 2-0 over Petri Makonen. And like Mark said, we'll be back at 5 p.m. Stay tuned, guys. There's a lot more coming. This was Mark White. Bye. And my name is Tim De Reuter. Thank you.